and welcome to our 21st Century Leadership Webinar. Next slide. I'm Virginia with Rutgers School of Management and Labor Relations, and I will be your host and moderator. The School of Management and Labor Relations is the proud sponsor for today's webinar, and we're very happy to include this topic into our webinar series. We encourage everybody uh, to send us any questions you may have. To do so, you will use the control box. The picture is depicted here. The uh, box with the arrow, the orange box with the arrow, uh, you'll use that to open and close your controls open and close your controls, and you'll type your questions into the question box, and you'll send uh, at any time, and you will press send. We will respond to all questions at the end of the webinar. The webinar is being recorded, and a link to the archive version will be sent to you via email by next week. It's now my pleasure to introduce our instructor. Lori McIsaac is a Senior Program Manager here at Rutgers School of Management and Labor Relations. Lori specializes in leadership development and change management and has worked with both small and medium-sized organizations as well as many Fortune 500 companies over her almost 25-year career. Lori, please take it away. Thanks, Virginia, and welcome, everyone. I'm delighted that you've joined us for leadership for the 21st century and I'd like to speak about some of the objectives we're trying to accomplish in our time together. We'd like to understand the challenges of 21st century leadership. We will know the key competencies for success as a 21st century leader and we'll learn the tools for developing an action plan to improve 21st century leadership capability. So let's talk about some of the challenges we're all facing in 21st century reality. First, we have a really strong technology-driven workplace that is lowering our barriers to entry and creating new industries all the time. We have increased globalization of markets, products, and people. Our workforce is changing. It's very diverse and multi-generational, which puts us in a different spot than it did years ago in terms of how we manage talent. And finally, our economy is shifting into a lower growth and lower productivity phase with declining populations worldwide. And all of these challenges in the 21st century have significant impact on our leadership requirements. So what is that impact? To be an effective leader in the 21st century while taking in all of these challenges, we have to do the following. We have to recognize that technology is creating an enormous amount of information sharing and collaboration and new ways of working. We have to figure out as leaders how to harness this for our organization's success. Globalization is increasing job competition and intensifying the demand for highly trained workers. And as leaders, we have to figure out how to get those talented individuals to join our organization and how to keep them motivated to stay. Our workforce has different values, different experience with technology, and different demands for a work-life balance than they did even 10 years ago. So how do we as leaders find ways to engage those employees for success? And finally, in general, the labor force growth is declining, but educational levels and knowledge-based skills are changing and asking us as leaders to figure out how to staff our organizations properly across the globe. These are some big challenges with a significant impact on us as leaders, so let's talk about how we handle it. Virginia? Okay, so we have a poll question. Do you experience these, do you experience these challenges and their impact on your leadership effectiveness? So if you can take a moment and um, select your answer. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and share the response. And Lori, 100% um, of our participants answered yes. Wow, that was easy and not surprising. Thank you everyone for saying so. These are definitely things we see every day. So let's talk a little bit about how we go ahead and manage those challenges as good leaders in our organizations. Well, as you all know, 
leadership is a function of having the proper competencies to have others in our organization follow us in order to improve the performance of our departments or our organizations as a whole. Here are five areas in leadership that we at Rutgers think need to be developed into competencies for leaders like yourselves. The first is to shape culture. The second is to engage employees. The third is to foster innovation. Next is to embrace globalization. And finally, to execute strategy. So we think a successful 21st century leader would have mastery of these key competencies in order to address the challenges we just laid out for the 21st century. So let's take a look at each one of these individually and see what we mean by a competency and how we might acquire it as a great leader. All right, Ginny. Okay, we're at our second poll question. Which leadership competency do you want to improve the most? And again, that is shaping culture, engaging employees, fostering innovation, embracing globalization, and executing strategy. So if you could just take another moment um, to submit your response. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and share the response. We have four people, uh, Rory, answered shaping culture. I'm sorry, that was 4%. Thank you. 4% engaging employees. 31% fostering innovation, 8% embracing globalization, and 4% executing strategy. Terrific. Thank you, uh, Virginia, and thank you, everyone, for those um, helpful uh, responses because I think that the, uh, the vast majority of folks are really looking into this engagement concept, which is exactly what I see across the board here at Rutgers when I meet um, companies um, from the area, and certainly the innovation piece as well. The culture, the globalization, and the strategy areas are things we've all been talking about uh, probably quite a bit in our um, most recent times, so it makes sense to me that those would be things that we're feeling a little more able as leaders. So let's talk about each one with the proportions that you've um, you've listed here so that I can hopefully answer some good questions about what uh, your ideas are around these topics. So shaping culture, I just want to mention that at Rutgers we feel strongly that emotional intelligence is a concept that we really like to ask our leaders to master when it comes to shaping culture. Cultures have been growing in organizations forever and we've been trying to shape them and change them, but we find that things don't always go as we plan. Uh, it's our experience that emotional intelligence is a concept that really has taken hold in organizations and can be spread throughout your departments um, in the different uh, individual contributors and even in the, in the leadership ranks as an area of improvement. So people need to get a sense of their own self-awareness and self-management skills as well as their social awareness and relationship management skills. So our course um, session here on Shaping culture will certainly uh, delve into emotional intelligence. And like I said, it's a widespread concept that most people have heard of and hopefully you folks are working on in your organizations. When it comes to engaging employees, again, we find this to be a very hot topic uh, of interest for competency development. Uh, we at Rutgers actually have put together a, uh, an engagement model that you see on your screen here. And this is a very high level view of it. And it talks about the drivers of engagement from a human resource management standpoint that help leaders like yourself keep their employees motivated and engaged. And it really talks about looking at the four areas in the blue boxes. So you as a leader want to make sure you work with your HR organization to be sure that the job characteristics, the role, the coworker support, and the management uh, encouragement and support are all in line with what's needed for engaging employees. Because the term engagement really means asking uh, and getting from uh, employees that discretionary effort to do more and to really commit to the organization. So job characteristics, if you'll take a look, you know, we usually think about this as the, the purview of HR, but as a leader, you know, you have control over the skill variety and the certain demands on the job that your people have. So working with them to make sure the job characteristics fit what they're looking for uh, around opportunity for variety and different levels of, uh, of, of uh, characteristics that make them engaged or passionate about their work will be helpful. From a role standpoint, you know, it seems very clear that 
employees are asking their managers and their leaders to help them clarify what it is you want me to do and how it is I can add value to the organization. So they care quite a bit um, about fitting in properly in their roles. And this will help them be engaged because they'll know what they need to do every day to add value to the organization, which provides meaning and they're hopefully their desire to stay. Coworkers, again, another critical area of engagement. People feel engaged when they find that their coworkers support them, that they have a trust relationship with the people they work with, and that their teams are effective. And you as a leader have some control over how that goes. And finally, managers. I'm sure you've heard the old adage that people don't leave companies, they leave managers. And as leaders, we need to be very effective with our people so that they want to stay, they want to engage and add value to the organization. So we need to provide them with good feedback, excellent recognition, and trustworthiness so that they will be successful, engaged, and valuable contributors to our organization. The other area that you folks were very interested in and that we hear a lot about is innovation. And as a leader, we really do have some control over helping our employees want to be innovative by the environment that we create. And here's some, some tips, if you will, for leaders when it comes to innovation. We wanna make sure we inspire it. And the way to do that is to talk about it, to show examples of it, to role model good behavior. And as we lead to number two here, to build systems that support it. So we wanna make sure that when we ask people to contribute, we're asking them in ways that are creative. We are not asking them to do the same old thing. And as we move forward to assessing innovation, that's a tough one. We really wanna make sure we bring all of our team members together to say not every creative idea is one worth pursuing. And how do we decide what our customers want and what our organization wants so we can pick and choose the proper innovations to go ahead and, and implement? We wanna create innovation champions by really empowering people within our organization to go ahead and try new things. Um, risk is uh, an area we wanna manage as a leader. Um, and we wanna talk about what we do when things don't go well and what it looks like when organizational uh, initiatives fail, how do we learn from them and move forward? But innovation is about risk and we wanna encourage a proper risk and appropriate risk in our organization. And then we wanna go ahead and launch the innovation. Usually we do this in a pilot. We might try out a new product line. We might try out a new customer service approach. And then we wanna collect some data and figure out how it worked. So as a leader, we can really work within our organization with the people that work for us to say, you know, we wanna get you people to be innovative and find new ideas. So let's do that as a team and work together to foster it, which will help employees want to stay in an organization that encourages them to be creative. As far as globalization is concerned, again, we've been all global organizations for quite some time. So I don't think that this is necessarily new, but I think as we look at engagement in innovation, we need to look at globalization with perhaps a different lens. All of these circles you see on the slide here today are very important drivers of globalization. But if you think about the idea um, that as leaders, we wanna have our employees focus on some of the lighter purple circles on the left-hand side, like fusing of culture and consumer demands up in the upper left. Are we asking our, our customers and our consumers what they want and are we building our culture to support those kinds of things across a global world? How are we doing on e-commerce? There's so much out there now that has to do with the, the internet and the way we interact with our customers and even our internal employees. Are we using commerce and, and internet platforms well? Are we sharing knowledge? Knowledge across a global organization, things that we do well here in the States, are we sending that information overseas and back and forth the other way so that people aren't recreating the wheel? When we have a great process, let's make sure we're going ahead and sharing that knowledge. And you can see the other ones as well. So globalization, although it may have been here for a while, the way in which we utilize it to engage our employees and allow them to be creative is definitely something we wanna keep track of as a good leader in our organization. And finally, driving execution. I guess at the end of the day, we've been talking about execution as leaders for so long, it almost becomes commonplace. But I'd like to say that any strategy that's worth defining in an organization and worth implementing really needs to be 
led and driven by you, the leaders. So once we've defined this starting point for the opportunities we'd like to delve into as a strategy, as you can see on the slide here, we at Rutgers feel strongly that there are voices we need to listen to to drive improved business results through a strategy. There's the voice of the customer, that's both the internal and external customer, and then there's the voice of the business. So we want to blend our qualitative information about our organization from the left-hand side with our quantitative information on the right-hand side, the financial and process orientations that drive our business. So if we as good leaders want to execute strategy, we need to figure out which of those voices are speaking to us, what are they saying, and how do those come together in projects or processes that drive strategy forward? So are we putting together effective project teams that take on specific strategic initiatives in our organization that allow us to improve how we do things, codify that, measure it, and then show that as improved business results for success? So again, driving execution would be an area that I think all of us need to keep uh, keep tabs on when it comes to being effective leaders in our organizations. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Virginia now and see what we've come up with from questions that you've submitted throughout our webinar so that I can answer them and we can have a little more understanding of these concepts. Okay, thank you, Lori. Uh, we did receive a, a few questions so far. And our first question is, what are some ways to engage your team to perform well together when there are general, uh, I'm sorry, generational differences between them? Oh, that's a great question and one we hear all the time. As we mentioned earlier, you know, the workforce is multi-generational. I was at a client last week and they were saying that they believe that the biggest challenge they have is to manage four generations within the workforce because people are staying in the workforce longer as their health improves and they would like to continue adding value. So we're dealing with baby boomers and uh, Generation X and millennials and, and all through the, the generation. One of the things that I think is most important to keep people engaged is to have those generations communicate with each other in unique and different ways. Basically to show those people across the organization that we as a company value all of their different perspectives. So putting together folks from the more tenured organizational levels, the folks maybe in the baby boomer generation with people in the millennial generation to work together, to help understand each other's perspectives and know that each of them adds value in the organization. And even to talk to our customers in this way, to reg recognize that that there are differences and not to pretend there aren't differences among our employees and that we want to add value in any way we can. So sometimes we hear about millennials training more um, uh, seasoned employees in things like technology. You know, so many times we have these new uh, platforms and new ways of communicating and sharing knowledge. And sometimes the, the folks from the more seasoned generation are just not familiar with it or comfortable with it. So we'll put together like an internal focus group and say we're going to have some of the um, uh, newer members of our, um, or our company train some of the more senior members um, in the organization on some of these new platforms and techniques. I myself have learned quite a bit from some of the younger folks in our organization and I, I encourage that. But they also would like to know more about my experience over the different years that I've been at the organization to give them some perspective so they can understand where we've come from. So I think engaging employees across a multi-generational workforce is about getting them to communicate with each other and see the value that they all bring to the table. Great, thank you, Lori. Our next question is, how do you get everyone on the leadership team to think at a higher level and not just live for the day? Basically, strategy plan for the future proactive, proactively? Well, that's a very good question as well. Thank you for that. Um, I think it's very easy to stay in the weeds, as I think the question is implying, to just be living day to day and doing your project work and not being able to look up and uh, see the, the, the horizon, so to speak. And as a leader, what's really important in that piece about executing strategy is even a step back, which is re reiterating the strategy. 
and getting together, whether it's virtually or in person with your team and taking a big step back. As I say, more of a five or 10,000 foot level uh, view of the organization. And as a leader, you can pull people together for even a short brief meeting, whether it's like I said, virtual or in person, and bring up a good strategic question to pose to them. Rather than you, the leader, you know, taking the opportunity during that meeting to quote, tell them or show them the vision of the organization you have and what it looks like, maybe let's ask them, you know, what, what is your vision? What do you see the organization being challenged by at a much higher level? And really use that as a launching pad for discussion because if they're just focused on task work, then they're not going to get up a little higher and see what's going on. But many times we don't ask them, we tell them what our strategy is and we tell them what the vision looks like, as opposed to asking them in the context of where we're going as an organization, what do you see as some of the future challenges strategically we're facing and how we might then go ahead and solve them? And once you get those higher level um, answers, then we can dig down into areas of improvement that we might want to farm out in, on a task team or a project team. But I think the key is to ask not to tell when it comes to strategic level thinking. Certainly give the parameters of what you know as the leader, as the strategy of the organization, but then give them some input into defining your own department strategy and questioning where it's going and figuring out how we're going to get there. Thank you, Lori. Our next question is, how do we execute with limited financial reporting data? Hmm, that's a good question. Limited financial reporting data. Well, first of all, obviously, any data that you have, you really want to make sure you do use from a financial reporting standpoint. But a smaller organization or a private organization certainly would have less data than, than others. So you want to try to get as much data as you can. Um, but when you do have a limited amount, I think the most important thing we can do is, is speak to each other with this, with this data and try to bring people to the awareness that we don't have a lot of data and that we want to be very cautious in how we not only use our resources, but how we move forward in terms of making decisions for the future. So I think making everybody aware of the fact that we don't have enough of the financial data we need would at least put people on notice of a, of a cautionary move when it comes to utilizing resources. But I also think that, that we need to challenge our organization to bring us that data. Um, our, our own people in our own in our own group, they may have some great ideas how with limited resources we can get some more data because making good decisions without data can be a little bit tricky. So I guess I guess I'm a little bit uh, concerned about the lack of data and I'd recommend that we try to get more of it, but in the absence of it, we just want to make people aware of the fact that we're going to be making decisions that are really going to need to be revisited regularly to see the results if it's working or not working so we don't utilize our resources um, in a way that it won't be for the maximum value of the organization. I hope that's helpful and I think it's, it can be very frustrating um, without data, but I think transparency with your employees saying to them, you know what, we're doing our best, we don't have all the information or all the answers and all the data, but we'd like to ask you to A, find some ways to get more data and B, be judicious in how we utilize our resources. Thank you. Okay, and this is our last question. How do you get your management team to become more competitive in the workplace and to understand that we have to be great to effectively compete? Hmm, okay. Um, competing is really an, an external concept, which is why I think the, the answer to your question has to do with really making sure that the team understands what they're up against outside of the walls of the company. I think that when we're trying to get better and do great work, it's it's better to look outside and say, what are other organizations doing that they're so successful at? And if we wanna compete with them, we don't necessarily want to just copy what they're doing. We want to be innovative and try something different that allows us to compete and maybe even exceed some of our competition. But one thing as a leader we can do is bring in that external data. So next time we're having a team meeting or we just even want to dispense it on an email to people, you know, what is our industry facing? So what four or five things can we as leaders remind people about? You know, there might have been a new entry in our in our marketplace and what kinds of things are they doing? You know, there might be some 
things going on in the in the um, government or policy area that's affecting our business and it's going to give us some challenges what are we know about that and what can we do to to be better around that particular challenge or constraint um, what's happening in um, in the world of of uh, of the industry itself, are, are we consolidating? Are we expanding? Are our prices becoming uh, pressured by uh, low-cost entrants? You know, really thinking about that that business mindset. I think sometimes we just get too focused on our own organization and all the different things that go on inside our walls that we forget about the fact that what's going on outside our walls is what really needs to help us be motivated to be great. So who's our competition, what are they doing, and how do we compete to get better than them? Um, I've worked in a number of organizations where we would really talk very specifically. In the beginning of my career, I worked at Xerox, um, and I remember talking a lot about Canon in the organization. We were not necessarily saying we wanted to be like Canon, we wanted to know what they were doing, and we wanted to be better. So find yourself a good external competitor to focus on and ask people to be great, to be able to, quote, beat out that competitor. Competitor. Okay, that was our last question. Thank you, Marie. All right. Well, thank you, Virginia, for moderating, and thank you, everyone, for your participation. Uh, it's been really interesting hearing some of the things you're faced with out there, and I think they're very much in line with some of the things that we see here at Rutgers. So what I want to do today is to invite you, if you enjoyed and uh, were excited about some of the topics we talked about and some of the competencies that we'd like to impart to you today at this webinar, to participate in our upcoming on-campus leadership development program called the Master's Certificate in Leadership for 21st Century. And it was right here on our Biscataway campus, November 13th through 17th. It's a five-day program, and we would like to offer you all a 20% discount to come and participate. If you can't join us for the entire program, you can join each session individually with that same discount. And I'd encourage you to take a look at our um, our website, which is epe.ruckers.edu, and you'll be able to find 21st Century Leadership, our master certificate program laid out with all of the 10 sessions there over the course of five days. And we'd really invite you to come to any or all of them at our discount and learn more about how we see competencies for the future and being successful in your organization. So hope to see you then. Okay. Well, thank you, Lori, for this informative presentation, and thank you all for participating. This concludes today's webinar. As I mentioned earlier, a link to the archived recording of this presentation will be sent to you shortly. Uh, we hope to see you in our future programs. And again, for more information, please visit our website, epe.ruckers.edu. Thank you.